Good evening. Sweet to um, sweet to be together this <laughs> night. I feel like um, I, 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 this is a strange thing to say, but it's true. Like it gives me a little early COVID nostalgia <laughs> when we were all first getting used to being online together. And there was all this uncertainty, at least here in the Bay Area, where we're like, do we have power? Can we make this work? Um, and I'm also feeling just, yeah, the incredible vulnerability of living in a natural world mm -hmm. that is so powerful and um, really grateful for having the, the walls and the ceiling and the floor around me. And also I, I live next to some big trees and uh, yeah, I usually set up teaching close to the altar, but um, I was getting a little worried about those branches. So yeah, just really feeling kind of a specialness of being together tonight. Um, the other analogy that came to me for those of you who know this is um, the never ending story. I don't know if you've seen this movie, but in the beginning, the movie, uh, the protagonist hides himself in a library, like under a blanket during a big rainstorm. And he finds the very best book, you know, this book that opens his mind and changes his life forever. So can't promise all that, but really excited to be here together. Um, and tonight, especially, um, the plan is to actually not continue with our wonderful story time with Old Path White Clouds, but to focus a bit more on intentions for the new year. It still is pretty fresh for many of us. And of course, it's a, a symbolic representation of what has passed. And yet, yeah, it is um, a different season and a different time and such a beautiful time actually to really refresh our connection to intention of being on this spiritual path and really consider and refresh what is that path mean to us and what are the intentions that will support it? So I know we have some probably uh, introductions and other things to start with, but that was a little um, opening there. Thank you all so much for virtually coming together again. Um, so many of you I got to know deeply during the pandemic online. And yeah, again, the richness and difficulty of that time just feel very poignant. Um, who is our web host tonight? Um, Eve, we're, we're, we're combining um, forces. Noam is not here because he's uh, powers out. So Mace and I are okay. kind of covering and um, I think I'm not sure about posting. I'm recording and Mace is going to do breakout rooms. And I'll do the Donna talk, but Diane, do you have the Donna links? Because for some reason, my computer won't open that right now. Yeah, I'll put them in the chat. Yeah, so I'll just give a few quick announcements before we get moving forward. You all mostly know them, I'm guessing, is um, I'm Mace. Um, I'm one of the volunteers at the center, and we got lots of wonderful volunteers on this call and some board members. And the beauty of our center is that it is a volunteer run and community run, right? Totally created by the folk, by all of us, by the Sangha. Um, and so on the calendar are all of our regular things and then there's uh you know obviously storms um barring more horrible storms in the center like right now i think the center doesn't have power so make sure to check the website if you have power uh saturday will be a half day peer led sit so that's been happening where peers come together all you know the song comes together there's no specific teacher and um, people sit i think alternating sits and walks um during the period of the hours which i did not write down and i don't i'm not good at multitasking with multiple screens open the time of which that and then the next thing that i will mention is donna um, Diane dropped the links in the box. There's a PayPal and a Venmo. I think our Venmo got fixed. Is that accurate, Cage? Yeah, okay. So the Venmo's working again. And, um, you know, the center was doing financially really well when we didn't have a physical space because we were, people were lovely and giving Donna and we were giving our share to our incredible teachers to help support them, which is super important. Um, but now we have 
the rent and all the upkeep and it would be really helpful if people um, remember to contribute. So I think there's a lot of, and we know that like we never would expect or want anyone to contribute anything more than was good for their financial well being. Um, so you know what that is for you. Um, but I think one of the things that happens in the online world and also in this virtual world of exchanging money, like the Venmo, PayPal world versus walking through the center and seeing the boxes you walk out, is that people intend to donate and then they forget. So I just a gentle reminder and we'll drop those uh, links in the chat again at the end of the night. And it is really important to me that we support the center and we support our teachers during these really unusual times that we're living through. Um, and that's all my announcements. Really grateful, grateful to be here with you all on this wet and windy evening. Thank you, Mace, and thanks everyone. Um, I did share at the top, but for folks who are just joining, we're, we're gonna do something a little bit different tonight. So we will start with a meditation and the meditation is intended to be a reflective process over the year. Um, and we will actually take an opportunity to reflect on, especially in this last year, what, what do we think that really supported us in this last year? What maybe got in the way? What more needs to be added? That's kind of the frame that we'll be looking at. And doing so in a practice of triad, so that's a small breakout group with three people. I know that is not for everybody. Some folks here might be making dinner or you know, attending to other things. No problem. If you don't want to join a group, they can just stay here, right? Mace, they could just stay in the main room. Yeah. It will only be 15 minutes um, of that time. And I used to really myself get really uncomfortable and look to the exit when people brought up things like breakout groups and triads. And I'm not gonna lie and say, I don't have some of that still in me, but I do think it's, it's really important for us, especially when it comes to intention to not only reflect, but to give voice. It creates a, se a sense of accountability. It creates also a different kind of linguistic way of transferring what might be a felt experience into words. One isn't better than the other. Writing, reflecting, speaking, all of them have differential benefits in terms of what we can learn and pull from them. And so when we do these breakouts, I'll, I'll say more about this. It's really a practice of compassionate listening and compassionate speaking, a little bit less like a conversation. So of course we will be with other people and introduce ourselves, but the intention is that we are almost audio journaling, like speaking what we might write down. And when we're listening, it's not as much thinking, how can I interject with a, a confirming word of like, oh yeah, me too, or oh, have you tried this? Right? We're really receiving and listening. It's a different way of engaging and one that, uh, as, as many of you know, I love relying on not only the me search, but the research. And there's been great evidence that these triadic practices are of huge benefit. Actually, when compared with simple mindfulness of breathing and even a compassion practice, the triad being able to share something of emotional content and value in a kind of structured setting online is more beneficial for reducing our stress. So this ability to share and express our own emotional experience can actually help us feel more at ease and more grounded. So I, I am looking forward to giving us that opportunity. We haven't done it as much in the last months and um, it's a nice opportunity to do so. It's such a great practice to do as we're setting intention. I'm gonna give just a one or two more words on uh, intention and and how powerful it is for us to kind of take a moment before any practice, but then take a moment at the beginning of this year to reset our intentions. You know, our, our intentions really help guide our habits. And our habits, really, we want our practice to infiltrate our everyday behaviors and activities. We want our practice to start creating and strengthening and maintaining these wholesome habits. We don't want the meditation, of course, to just be what happens on the cushion. 
it has to really kind of infiltrate a lot of our daily life. And when we get clearer and clearer and almost as though we're developing an ongoing relationship with our intentions, that's when they start to really kind of get that momentum of becoming a habit. So I, I really love this opportunity to kind of get clear. Now, intentions are, are not something someone else can give you. Uh, of course, you know, one of the reasons we didn't meet together tonight, Noam and Mace and I were texting and trying to figure out if it was a good idea or not. And I can't remember if it was Noam or Mace, but someone said our, our primary goal for this center is non-harming. And it's probably the greatest non-harming to not ask people to come out tonight in case, God forbid, someone got into an accident or you know, um, something difficult happened. So that's a great intention of Buddhism is how can we reduce harm and suffering? Of course, for ourselves and for others in our body, in our speech, in our mind. But it's really useful to have intentions that reflect our life, something that feels alive for us. And to do so in this practice, we're gonna reflect on this last year reflect on the things that were difficult and bring compassion to them, reflect on what was inspiring, meaningful or moving and rejoice and really give ourselves kind of this opportunity in our meditation, almost as though it were a laboratory to explore kind of the very ground of where our intention should be coming from, how we can understand and look towards what will help us in this year ahead in that sustaining and maintaining, in that strengthening or in that loosening. So that's where we are. And again, welcome. And for those of you who maybe haven't been here before, San Francisco Dharma Collective, as mentioned, is a fully volunteer run center. So wonderful, based in the Mission District in San Francisco. And yeah, it's really our, our goal and our hope to bring these teachings to life by practicing together. I will assure you, you will hear nothing new here, ever. These are always the same teachings, thousands of years, but it's through the connection with one another they come alive for us. So without further ado, I do love a long preamble, excuse me. Let's find a, a position that's comfortable for us. And since some of us have been spending a lot of time already, maybe in front of a screen today, I'm gonna ask us to take even a bit more time with our posture. I was fortunate to just do a week of retreat. And part of that practice was a deepening into the experience of posture as practice. That the very posture of how we sit is a way that we can find ourselves closer and closer to an awakened state. So whether we're sitting cross-legged or simply in a chair or couch, really feel and find an experience of dignity in the posture. That dignity is the experience of the spine, kind of exalted, lifted, and feel that lifting coming from the low belly not just a tightening of the back or like a strengthening, but feeling the very power rooted in the low belly. And from that power and rootedness of the low belly, the natural rising up of the spine. <clears throat> Many of us are carrying our own and others' worries in the shoulders and the neck giving ourselves a moment here to relax the shoulders and necks by inhaling our shoulders up to our ears and exhaling down the back. Twice more, inhaling, exhale, releasing tension, opening the heart once more. And feel or imagine the heart like a chalice tilting upward towards these wonderful stormy skies. And this uprightness of our spine, which sometimes is called our central channel, 
We can feel it from the very base of our sits bones all the way to the top of the head. And we can find more length in it, both by expanding the chest and also experiencing the head resting quite evenly on top of the neck. So not tilted backwards, not sloping forwards, giving yourself a moment to find the right posture of the neck on top of, sorry, of the head on top of the neck. Just one or two more moments here, finding in our posture that sense of aliveness, awakeness, dignity. Continuing to connect with the sensations in the body as we begin this practice. Just noticing the relative stillness of the body in the sitting posture, as well as the movement, the subtle energies running throughout the body. For a little while here, we're going to ground our attention and awareness fully through the body, not telling ourselves to focus on the body, to simply be in the body, aware and focused, as though the body were meditating you. It can be hard for us to invite our attention and awareness to be in the body. Thoughts and memories and images arise. No problem. Continue to re-inhabit the body. And for a while, try doing so directly through the belly. Feeling the belly as the stable center. Noticing the belly and its undulating rising and falling breath to breath. And feeling the belly from within the belly.
taking a moment, reconnecting to the posture, feeling the stable base of the belly, the length of the spine, the balance of the head, ease through the shoulders, feeling that our posture is perfectly situated, really inviting as much as possible a stillness of body that can start to invite a stillness of mind. Gently narrowing our focus a bit more into the sensations of breath traveling in and out of the nostrils. Still deeply rooted in the feeling of being in the body and in the belly, but just giving our mind another place to land, allowing it to feel more settled through this focused attention of the subtle sensations of breath traveling in and out of the nostrils. Releasing this tighter focus on the sensations of breath at the nostrils. Giving ourselves another moment to just feel whatever we can feel throughout the body. Let our full awareness and attention be in the body and of the body. And we will gently shift our focus now, maintaining our presence in the body, but considering and inviting in imagination and memory. And taking a moment to really have a sense of the past, which has traveled or been traveled behind us. Thinking of this last year, it's many, many, many moments. And generating a real sense of care for our own well being. A sense of care that brought us here this evening to be in community and practice. And a sense of care that inspires us to more and more deepen 
our compassion, our wisdom, and our insight. Feel that care in the body. As though there's a spark, a pilot light in the heart, always on at deepest aspiration of love, compassion, kindness. From this place, consider an experience in the last year that was hard. Maybe a time in which you experienced physical or mental distress, maybe both. It's possible there are many. Uh, for the moment, just choose one. Feeling that heartfelt sense of care in our whole body. And as we look back and reflect on this time, feeling not only a sense of care, but a sense of inquiry. Considering these reflections in this time of difficulty, challenge, what was there to support me? There could be words or images. Whatever arises is fine. You don't need to think into this as much as receive and notice what comes to mind. Checking in the body and <clears throat> noticing how the body feels, recalling the support which was there in this difficult time. And releasing this question and shifting to consider what was it in this time that could have supported you more? What were the ways possibly that in addition to the raw difficulty and pain of this, maybe we added some further challenge Are there ways that we consider what we might want to have less of in such times of difficulty? Again, considering this reflection with that heartfelt care, not a moment to get down on ourselves, but a moment of clear seeing. Maybe there was a habit or pattern at play that we can clearly recognize got in the way, added further difficulty. Seeing it with these eyes of compassion, not negative judgment, not self-criticism. And releasing this inquiry, and considering one last aspect of this experience, this challenge that we had. What might we needed that we didn't have? Is there something that we could have really benefited from? Some practice, some way of seeing or being. 
And this one might be a little fuzzy, no problem. Just let yourself sit with this. What might need to be strengthened or brought forward in a time of challenge and difficulty? And releasing this question and returning again to the sense of care in the body. This could be a heartfelt sense, really emanating or radiating from the heart area. Or it could simply be this deep knowing of an aspiration to be free from suffering, a genuine stance or position of kindness. Feeling this experience through the body, feeling this body as a body of kindness, compassion. And again, in reflecting on this last year, considering a time in which we felt inspired, a time maybe we felt at ease, peaceful, a sense of contentment, satisfaction. Hopefully there are many such times to choose from. Let's consider one that seems to stand out. Again, inviting the experience of this time and the memories and noticing how that might shift and change what's happening in the body. And again, engaging with these questions of inquiry. What supported this experience of inspiration, peace, contentment, satisfaction? What were the causes and conditions in your life that really supported your experience of this? Noticing again the shifts and changes in the body. And releasing this inquiry and shifting again to the consideration of what if anything blocked or hastened this experience from leaving. What got in the way? Maybe there's nothing that feels like it was in the way at the moment. Maybe there's a sense of what could get in the way of this being a more common everyday experience. 
Again, these might be habits or patterns of our daily life rooted in old ideas and experiences. What are the ways we might get in the way inadvertently of our own happiness, well-being? Again, seeing this with eyes of compassion, noticing if judgment sneaks in, and just giving ourselves a moment or two more to reflect with clear seeing. releasing this inquiry and again shifting consider what might strengthen what might serve to create more of this not with a sense of craving or greed but a recognition of the benefit of such wholesome states. And releasing this inquiry question once again and returning to the breath and the body. And prospectively, considering the year ahead. Maybe there are some things we know will be happening, certain responsibilities or experiences and events that are planned. And so, so, so much more we have no idea about. Imagining that once again, there will be causes and conditions that create opportunities for difficulty, disappointment, loss, loneliness, anxiety, judgment, comparison, all of it, as well as opportunities of joy, connection, deepening purpose, overall contentment and satisfaction. Over and over and over. And as we look prospectively ahead, considering what will support us that we already have? What do we want to maintain in this year ahead? This could feel like a, 
a recommitment or just a clarity, a sense of resolve. And what is it that we might need to help purify, release, loosen, or let go of? What might be in the way? As we imagine this year ahead, what would we like to shed more and more of? And what might we need to develop? What might be something new? Something that's already starting, maybe a bit nascent, but needs its full attention, its full support with our energy. And then taking a moment here to consider how what we can strengthen and loosen and maintain may help us be of greater service to ourselves and all other beings. What might we like to bring forth and share with others more. This includes, of course, the greatest aspirations for how we relieve suffering in the world. in our day-to-day interactions with loved ones? What would we like to be more present with? What would we like to really be able to offer as a quality of the heart with those that we see, engage, and are in community with? And gently releasing the inquiry questions, the thoughts and images. And allowing ourselves to simply be with this felt quality of really stirring these important questions. Connecting with the overall feeling of intention and aspiration. Using our deepest wisdom and compassion to prospectively and clearly see what intentions are needed in the year ahead. Just feel a sense of that alignment in the body, the breath.
Thank you for your practice. Felt like a journey, not just a practice. So yeah, before we um, kind of take this inquiry into our triads, and I should mention, um, I have these, these questions written down for us. So for those of you who'd prefer to just stay in the main room, you can also just write in reflection for this inquiry. Um, but curious if there are questions from folks or reflections, you can put these in the chat or you can put these, you can raise your hand, probably best if you raise your virtual hand, I can see you a little better. As you're figuring it out, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce my kitties to the SF Dharma Collective Sangha. Because they are my co-meditation teachers tonight. Because they are unbelievably adorable. Great sense of mudita for me. So yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite part of our online teachings during the pandemic was everybody's furry friends stepping on the keyboard, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, any questions or reflections on that practice? It's not exactly an easy practice. Um, it asks a lot of us. Looking for the chat. Uh -huh, okay. I know it's awkward being online again. It's okay. We can, anyone who says the first thing, everyone will then feel more comfortable. So please, if you have a reflection or question, yeah, I would love to hear. Yes. Kathy. Hi, that was great. I haven't been on before. I just, I just found you guys. Um, Come. It's wonderful. Um, and uh, I really appreciated, uh, I, I appreciated how you uh, took us through that process. Because I have um, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, been through a lot of change this last year. And I really felt during the ho holidays are tough for I mean, I've been a practicing Buddhist for 35 years, but you know, it's the whole thing about Christmas and the nostalgia around it. And this year, uh, the nostalgia of losing a primary relationship. And it, you know, it's just like, oh, come on. You just rub it. And then co I'm in LA, so the our numbers are, our COVID numbers are really high and everybody around me is getting sick again. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm going back into the behaviors. I practiced really well. And um, so I, I um, uh, have made a commitment to dive into intentions for this next year because hmm. I know 23. <laughs> I'm committed to 23 being better than 22. Hmm. Um, at least, you know, that's my hope. And uh, your, I've been doing a lot of writing about it, but your uh, leading with um, a, a storyline of, uh, um, of a process um that, that had um a, a weaving in and out that i hadn't been able to do it was very helpful mm. yeah so thank you for doing thank it. you kathy yeah i appreciate that and oh i hear you on the holidays um for many years when i used to um teach for the big heart city um which was against the stream um before that i would teach um a holiday session on the holiday schmear, which is the combination of shame and fear that we can experience over the holidays. And uh, 
It is, yeah, it is. It's a really poignant time and it's it's kind of a big exhale to be on the other side, I think for a lot of us. And, and I do think there's an enormous benefit for us, like as I mentioned, journaling our own experiences um, and, and guided reflection and guided reflection with other people. You know, it's one thing to listen to like a podcast recording, it's great, but really all of us here we know it, right? There's a different feeling, even virtually. So thanks for showing up. Yeah, thank you. The, the momentum that you created um, for us um, was sort of a, a pathway through the woods. <laughs> was just uh, powerful. So glad. I couldn't, I couldn't get that, you know, I could get the parts of it, but yeah. I couldn't get the flow like you just provided. So thank you, it was great. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, welcome. And I see a hand for Augusta and then Jason. Yeah. Thanks, Eve. I would just wanted to reflect that I felt a theme emerging for me in each of the categories in the three different arenas. Hmm. That's common or typical. I just was appreciating it. And like, oh, look at that. Hmm. Oh, oh, there's, oh. Yeah. I think it's, it's so, it's so beautiful because often we're kind of like right here with our stuff. And then if we can look here, it's like, oh, there's a pattern. Like there's a, and, and you know, a lot of it, unfortunately, both the things that support us and get in the way, you know, they're, um, they're old habits. We learned them a long time ago. And so there's a familiarity often that we can recognize. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I always appreciate when I can see, oh, it's that same thing. Mm -hmm. so, in a different way. so I just keep caring for this thing and it will affect all of us. I don't have to like try to address all those manifestations. So. Yeah, and you know, of course, um, I like everyone, wish that awareness was enough, right? Um, and I think the awareness and then also tying it to these like emotional experiences in the body, right? And really getting a sense of the feel in the body. Um, so yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Jason. Hey, uh, happy new, I like to say happy new ears because I'm a sound person. Um, but just the, the, what you were able to help me with was recognize, oh yeah, I mean, Schmier, right. I, I totally relate to that. That's like part of the whole experience and, um, and sort of like, uh, almost like, um, I'm thinking of like, with a feeling of getting through the holidays, it's like walking on a tightrope mm. where on either side of it is shame and fear. And I'm on this sort of like present moment of like, like just stay here. I'm okay. And then, anyway, that 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 image of Schmier is it, it's very helpful. Um, but the thing that I recognize is like, oh, I lost my dad last year. 2022 yeah. was like started with, yeah, this this impending loss that happened in spring, and then it was the recovery from that. Yeah. And I haven't, you know, even though I was kind of in a process of going like, oh, this is my first Christmas without any parents, like I'm now an orphan, weird feeling of mm -hmm. recognizing like what that what that means, but just really saying, you know, really having an opportunity to, to from a position of calm, not anxiety, and not schmear, uh, mm -hmm. really reflecting and going like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm okay, even though there's all this stuff going on, this huge cycles of loss and grief everything's okay it's like the equanimity really came back hmm. it's in the body you know so i really appreciate it i really just felt really your guiding was was exquisite in getting us getting me to just kind of like stop uh sort of spinning as i yeah. normally do so thank you oh jason very touching and meaningful to be with you on this path and this journey and when I saw your hand raise I thought of your dad and you and yeah it is these these huge events it's very hard for us to get a sense of 
what's even going on? Like, you know, <laughs> what's even going on? And then to be able to say, I love that, like, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Um, so great to check in at that level. And, you know, I'd say, especially knowing you like so much, the fruit of your practice and your dedication. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, the other thing I wanted to say was like, it's an, it's an opportunity to remember uh, all the things that in that cycle, like what the points of, um, of equanimity or grace or whatever it is that sort of gets you from one point to the next when you're diving pretty deep. And I don't know, there's, there's something really, um, I'm, I'm curious now, I feel like I'm in the right place to do this intention stuff. It's clear to me now what I, what I'm able to reflect on and what I'm able to do. So thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So before, oh yes, please. I see you. I see your fingers raised. Sylvia, please. <laughs> oh, we have to unmute you though. Please, please unmute first. Where is it? So little, microphone button for me it's at the top might be at the bottom oh wait can we unmute you i got it perfect okay i want to thank you eve and i want to thank everybody because to be together in a group even if we are not together it feels warm it feels it feels very important for me at least and I so much wish to touch your little cats and be with <laughs> your little cats. I they are adorable. <laughs> I want one at least, if you don't mind. <laughs> and uh, well, with everybody and to everybody, I wish for all of us a better year with no worries, being able to go everywhere inside like a normal life i hope that that year it's going to start like that so uh thank you for the mm -hmm. sangha thank you for mace for organizing and doing all the work you do and everybody who does that work thank you mm -hmm. thank you thank you sylvia thank you for your practice and your support being here yeah you can come visit the kitties anytime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will. I take. I take Coco. <laughs> yeah. Bring Coco. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Sylvia has a wonderful little dog who is very devoted, but not sure how the kitties will get along. No, no. I, I, I go by myself. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Eve. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I think this time, you know, of increasing uncertainty about what life is going to continue to look like and evolve and that we can gather um, is unbelievably precious. Um, and before we get into one more time to look at these kind of reflections, so we've done them now as a guided practice, and then we'll share them in triads. And I just want us to, again, kind of refresh the sense of what are we setting these intentions for? Like, what is the goal? Like, why are we coming together, <clears throat> dedicating at least part of our life, and for some of us, a lot of our life to these practices? It's, you know, it's the simple semantics around, like, what is awakening? Um, it should be a simple question, but I think it's actually much better of a question when it's complicated and nuanced for our lives, right? So we want to wake up from the patterns of delusion, of craving, of aversion. But what does that actually look like for us on a day-to-day -day basis? And, and what does it look like for us on a year-to-year -year basis? I was really startled the first time I ever heard a spiritual teacher say that you could wake up in this lifetime. It was extremely exciting to me and, and very intimidating and I have to say since then I've like really vacillated back and forth I've been like well maybe next lifetime maybe I'll make a little progress and like next lifetime even though the multiple lifetime 
experience is a hazy uncertainty for me. Uh, and I think it can feel a bit intimidating. Like, what do you mean? How can I set my intentions for awakening? Like me, like this year, it feels, it feels hard. And yet I think if we get, you know, kind of like really simple um, on the intentions, it can and at least be like, how do we at least prime the conditions? Like, can we get clear on the obstacles? Like if we don't feel clear on exactly what it is the awakening is we're moving towards, do we know what it isn't? <laughs> do we know what's in the way? Do we know that what like is nudging us, right? And I personally really love um, and resonate to this idea that awakening is not a destination. And then many of us have many moments of that feeling, right? Of being free. It feels free. It's a sense of, or can be a sense of true alignment and connection, right? We don't uh, wake up by transcending our immediate experience or difficult family members. Like they're still here. Like it's all included. Like, what do we need to make more space around our experiences? Space and energy, these are the two words as a meditation teacher, like you don't wanna to use too much because they're so vague, but they're so perfect, right? We need space and we have to like give a lot of our energy towards it. Um, and I'd be curious um, and folks can do this in the chat if they like. I used an iPad here in case I lost uh, some power because it's tethered to my phone so I can't see the chat that well but um can folks maybe in the chat write like what is like awakening like what are some words or what are some um phrases when you think of I'm setting my intentions for this year my goal not just to be happy right because happy is easy happy come comes and goes like we want that sustained contentment. We want that sense of purpose and meaning and alignment. We want that flavor of waking up. So any thoughts, like what is awakening actually? Like what is this thing we're putting our sights towards? Full presence, freedom from greed, hatred and delusion. When awake, everything is simple. Presence. Yeah, it feels so simple. And I, I really like getting specific to, you know, awake to um, the limiting beliefs I impose on myself. Like awake to how I put boundaries between myself and other suffering. Right? Really like awake to all the things that are in between us and this compassion without barrier. So hard for most of us that feels overwhelming. It feels like, a, like why would I even try for that? Like how, how can we set our sights clearly on the kinds of qualities that waking up would feel like? Yeah, just really appreciating um, what's written in the chat there as well. So I'm going to go ahead here, um, changing the way I feel and behave, awareness with acceptance. I love that. Okay. So Mason, I'm gonna ask you to get these breakout groups ready. And I'm gonna put something in the chat here for folks. I think you'll, you might, uh, you might lose it. So you might wanna kind of copy and paste it. You might lose it when you go into your breakout room, but you know, introduce yourself, um, maybe where you are. And then whoever has the longest first name will go first. Um, and again, just a kind of reprimer for ourselves. Not so much a conversation, a bit more almost like a audio journaling. And someone please to keep the time, about three minutes per person. What would you like to strengthen this year? 
What do you want to loosen this year? Oh, Mace got a kitty. Uh, what would you like to maintain? And then is there something that you can share an example of these? Now, of course, we would love that this could be um, an entirely kind of sacred practice, not something we're sharing, but I really invite you to share what feels right. No need to go into detail, no need to um, share more than feels comfortable. And again, because we are meeting online virtually and we don't all know each other, if it feels better to you to do this as a written exercise for the next 15 minutes, that's awesome. Um, and Mace will kind of, if you end up in a dyad, triad and there's no one there, she'll, she'll shuffle someone in. Um, and Mace, I'd like to join one too, if I can. Okay, so we'll be back in 15 minutes. So just five before, yeah, just before the end. Okay, welcome back for those who got to connect with others. Um, yeah, I, I hope you all felt a bit of that, um, you know, the benefit and joy of really giving words to and being witnessed in um, this experience. Oops, I can only see myself. Okay, phew. Um, yeah, such a rich time to reflect and just wanting to offer that I think Sometimes this work of our intentions, even if we maybe didn't get to something we feel like, yeah, that is it. That's what I'm gonna kind of write on a post-it note and place on my mirror and look at every morning. Like this might be something that's unfolding over the next couple of days. And one thing I think is useful, um, used in, in different contexts in Buddhism, but these ideas of kind of the outer, the inner and the innermost. You know, so we were looking at these various aspects of strengthening and maintaining and loosening and considering kind of at what levels they're impacting us. And the reason I think this is useful is because it's, it's important to think about at least the way um, I'm conceptualizing these outer and inner and innermost, like the outer is a lot of our, um, like the behaviors and activities and the ways that we are in the world, right? And some of, the, some of our intentions will directly relate to that. One that came up for me was, you know, not filling my schedule so much, right? It's really an outer thing. What am I gonna do? What are the ways I can kind of construct different um, habits that are really helpful and useful? And then when we think of inner, you know, this is a lot of the ways that we're thinking of our relationship with ourself. So for another one um, that I shared and um, heard resonated was, can I ask for help? Can I be more vulnerable with others when, when I need it, right? And, um, you know, that's a really, that's a really powerful one. Um, and that's a little more inner, like something we're doing really um, shifting the way that we're considering especially at that psycho-spiritual level, right? The kind of psychological pieces that are part of our path and are really, as I mentioned earlier, like a lot of these habits we learned really early on, really early on. And maybe we've been working on them for years, but we gotta keep working, right? They took years to get here and they're gonna take years to unwind. That innermost, sometimes called that secret, that's like, what are we working on at the deepest, most spiritual level? Like, what are we committing in our intentional life to really like blossoming our spiritual practice? And, and it could be anything. Um, again, I'll just use my own example of a deepening and continuing to maintain this relationship with the natural world. And not just because it feels good from the outside, but because of what it brings forth in my spiritual practice. Um, I, I was sharing that I have a sense of the more and more I connect to really the animism of this world, right? The aliveness in all things and the rocks and the wind and this amazing rain, um, the easier it is for me to actually experience a sense of non-duality. And so what are we doing to cultivate this like innermost or secret? And my, my thought for myself, when I'd love to share with you all is, are we really making shifts at all three levels through our intention? 
or are we really focusing on the maintaining, sustaining, and loosening at all three levels? Not just changing the outer conditions, really important, really, really important. Relationships, work, people, places, a lot of the conditions. Also, we really need to be doing that with ourselves, right? And forgiveness and forgiveness and compassion and kindness and more compassion, but also that innermost level, like what are we doing to really keep that flame um, and spirit alive of our practice and have it deepen. So yeah, that's just feels like a really another nice way to, um, to think about this opportunity of intentions. And it's, you know, I, I really resisted this idea of intention for, for years because it, it felt like a to-do and kind of just this arbitrary moment that we took to exercise some sort of false control over our life. But I think we can make it really wholesome. Um, and I was inspired by a friend who's sometimes has filled in here at SFDC, um, Lobsong Tempa, um, who's a meditation teacher. And he really did a beautiful practice for the new year of purifying our obstacles. That was his Buddhist approach. And um, I think it is worthwhile to give ourselves that, that warm intention of what can we do to, if we don't know exactly our direct steps towards awakening this year, what can we do to clear the path a bit more? It feels very rich. Um, and yeah, really so grateful for you all showing up virtually. I know after being in person for some of us, it, it's a hard shift, um, but really nice to be together. And next week, assuming we don't have another bomb cyclone, um, we I'll be in person again. Uh, it'll be myself. Um, Chandra has been having some um, like some low back pain. I think she mentioned last week, it's just harder for her to sit these days. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a bit more of the classes um, until our dear low pond Chandra can return and feel healthier and more fully uh, present with our group. So I'll be there next week and probably coming with a special guest to be announced, uh, just to be exciting, but we will get back to our book. For those of you who are just coming for the first time, we are making our way through this beautiful book. Yay, Diane has it too. Old Path, White Clouds, The Historical Life of the Buddha, told in stories compiled by, compiled by and styled by uh, our late great beloved Thich Nhat Hanh. Just such an inspiring way to think about these teachings through the living story of the Buddha. So we'll return to that next week. Um, yes, Steve. Would you please repeat the name of the book or put oh, yes. it in the chat, please? It's Old Path, White Clouds. Okay, got it. it unbelievably, it's actually a page turner. I don't say that about many Buddhist books, you know? Right. I, worthwhile, but this is really a beautiful book. Um, just these stories. We're already on chapter seven, maybe even, maybe even more, but kind of going back and forth. So. Yeah, I thought it was nine. Nine, it might be nine. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia, for keeping us honest. And you can so, color the pictures. And you, oh, it's true. There's yeah. nice little color in the, I didn't even thought about that. It's like an adult coloring book as well. Yeah. There's these beautiful yeah. woodblock yeah. prints. Get your color yeah. Oh, you're coloring <laughs> them. You know, I did this the first time I read it and I had so yeah. much fun. And then I, I realized reading it again, I didn't color a lot of them. So it's fun. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. So yeah, we'll take a moment and dedicate the merit. And Jason, we'll get back to purifying obstacles next week, but that's what we're doing. Purifying, liberating, opening, making space. Yeah, yeah. Not getting rid of, but just, you know, turning the poison into medicine, right? Like finding the wisdom in the suffering. It's that. Um, and is this problem. meeting a hybrid? Yeah, yeah, so we have, and it's actually pretty, really well set up in person online, so we have good engagement. Uh, you can't see the people in the room, you can really only see me as the teacher in the room, but I can very easily see all the online folks, which is great, so it feels very connected. Thank you. Yeah.
So we'll just take a moment here and <clears throat> return to this beautiful home that we have in our body. And bringing our hands into prayer, if that feels comfortable. Otherwise, just bringing our gaze and intention towards the heart. And taking a moment and considering if there's any benefit of our practice together. Any ways our heart or mind or body feels lifted. That we dedicate that that we aspire that that will be of service. And that part of our work here together in transforming our hearts and minds and bodies. And so that we can be of greater service in supporting all beings to be free, all beings to be safe, all beings to have shelter from the storm, all beings to know health, love and peace.